with the university community a message from Chancellor Timothy White announcing that the CSU will not raise tuition in the 2018-19 academic year. While this is very good news for our students, the Chancellor did not make his decision lightly, and here's why. Governor Brown's budget proposal for the new fiscal year falls $171 million short of full funding for the CSU. If the governor's budget is approved, the CSU will face difficult financial decisions. The CSU is fulfilling its educational mission, enrolling and graduating students in record numbers. The CSU is an economic engine for the state, providing tens of thousands of skilled professionals annually. As our elected officials move closer to adopting the 2018-19 budget, CSU leaders will continue to make their voices heard in the state capitol. I encourage you to make your voices heard as well. I'm introducing a new feature in this message, which I'm calling Difference Makers. So many people and programs play a role in helping to ensure that our students have a successful and fulfilling time at Cal Poly Pomona. One of the most important things we can do is to be there for our students in a time of need. Dr. Leticia Gutierrez Lopez is the Associate Vice President for Campus Health and Wellbeing in the Division of Student Affairs, which provides an array of services from stress management to nutrition advice to peer counseling. Sometimes things can be resolved quickly, and sometimes they require ongoing individual attention. If you do not already know her, I am pleased to introduce you to Dr. Letty as she is known to colleagues and students alike. Here at Cal Poly Pomona, I oversee the Campus Health and Wellbeing. Basically what it is is it encompasses all services that focus on the holistic well-being of our students, really focusing on all aspects of their lives. What we have is our health services, we have wellness services, counseling and psychological services, disability resource center. Unfortunately, we have students on our campus who are struggling and having to make the difficult decision between purchasing a meal or purchasing a book that they need for their classes. Part of our goal is to really stomp out stigma. We really want to make the information available to students so that they can understand what resources are available and also educate them that they're not alone. With our Broncos Care program, we are placing an emphasis on the issue of food insecurity. And we really are focusing on what can we do to remove any barriers to ensure that our students are successful. I remember when I first went to college how it it was overwhelming, being the first in my immediate family to go to college, eventually feeling a sense of really high stress, and I remember speaking to one of the professors that was really a mentor to me, and he suggested maybe you can go to the counseling center. And you know, there was that stigma attached to, if I go to the counseling center, what are people gonna think? But I did go, and it was very helpful. I firmly believe that the services that are provided under the area of campus health and well-being are definitely transformational services. I want to stress to students how important it is that they become aware of the services on the campus as well as access those services because they're here for you. When I entered college, I felt a tremendous sense of freedom freedom to choose a major, freedom to plan my future, freedom to try new things and make new friends. Students today experience the same freedoms, but for many, especially those who are the first in their family to attend college, life at a university can be a maze of contradictions. Cal Poly Pomona and most other universities highlight inclusion among their cherished principles, and they strive to make sure that everyone in the community feels a sense of belonging. Regardless of your background, your circumstances, you are all part of this great university, 
and I care deeply about each one of you and your development, your success, and the attainment of your goals. As my journey was, your journey will not be without challenges, and sometimes those challenges will test your resolve. As you have seen across the country, there are individuals who are speaking at universities whose views are antithetical to are in conflict with the institution's espoused core values. Indeed, as a public university, we are required to open our doors to speakers who espouse views on a variety of topics and from any number of perspectives. I'm not talking about perspectives that may result in reasonable disagreements and varying viewpoints, which in fact can contribute to one's learning. I'm talking about offensive and perhaps even hateful views that make a mockery of inclusion and diversity or other principles that we hold dear. Some might ask, why should we allow the public expression of views that violate our university's core values? It gets back to our individual freedom. In this case, the right of freedom of expression, which is bestowed upon and protects all of us through the First Amendment of our country's Constitution. The First Amendment, which reinforces many other human rights, allows not only candid debate and civil dialogue on college campuses and in society, it protects speech that some of us find highly offensive or even consider hateful. But we are not victims in this process. First, we need to make clear that protecting the right of abhorrent speech does not mean endorsing abhorrent speech. As a university community, we stand together in support of each other, in support of our core values of diversity and inclusivity. I believe the best way to counter abhorrent speech is not by attempting to silence it, but by vigorously defending unity over division. You don't win the argument by shouting down the bad. You win by holding up the good. While we do not defend the content of every opinion expressed by every member of our community or of speakers who are invited to our campus, we will defend their right to speak freely. That freedom is fundamental to Cal Poly Pomona and our nation. At the same time, we differentiate between protecting free speech and addressing harmful or destructive behavior, behavior that violates the law or our university's code of student conduct will not be tolerated. Ultimately, the best way to triumph is to earn your degree, succeed in life, and vigorously support the causes you believe in that gives you power and makes you an agent of change. The new Student Services and Administration Building with its distinctive roof line and student-focused design is really starting to take shape. Some of you who will be moving there are probably wondering what your new environment will look like. Vice presidents from all divisions will receive space configuration diagrams showing which parts of the building their staffs will occupy. Those of you who will be making the move will receive information and timelines as we get closer to departing the CLA Tower. Though the building will be new, it's expected that the furniture from the CLA will make the move as well. It was my distinct honor at the recent Hospitality Uncorked event to announce a $10 million endowment gift from Carol and Jim Collins, the largest single donation ever to the Collins College of Hospitality Management. The gift will provide scholarships and internship opportunities for academically talented, historically underrepresented hospitality management students. 
It will also invest in resources for faculty and help create a PhD program in hospitality management. Cal Poly Pomona is fortunate to have such wonderful benefactors as Carol and Jim Collins, who believe in our inclusive polytechnic approach to higher education. It is always proper to say thank you when you receive a gift. Our Division of University Advancement receives a lot of gifts on behalf of the university from friends and alumni who believe in our students and our mission and a small team in advancement operation works hard to make sure that we say thank you in a sincere and timely manner. Cassie Bonagas, the gift processing specialist for advancement, goes the extra mile to direct gifts to their intended place and thank donors whenever she gets the opportunity. For all that she does, I'm delighted to introduce her in our latest segment of Bronco Bravo. My name is Cassie Benagas. I'm the gift processing specialist here at Cal Poly Pomona. I've been in this role about three years. In this role, I'm responsible for processing all charitable donations. The funds that come in are then used on campus, and it's really my responsibility to make sure it goes to the right place. Cassie has a tremendous impact on the university. She's helping our students get scholarships. She's helping our students get support for traveling, for programs, for participating in a lot of their educational experiences. So we do receive some interesting gifts. I've processed for the Arabian Horse Center. We get breeding rights all the way to actually receiving horses. One of my favorite fundraising stories here lately on campus is about Pancho the Llama. Initially, the department approached us and worked directly with Cassie and said that they needed a new llama to protect their sheep out in the field. So we were involved with that process from start to finish, from creating a, a web link for them to use and all the way to the naming of the llama. So it was a fun process because we got to see right when we hit our goal. I think what I love most about Cassie and why she's so great to work with is her positive attitude. She's just such a pleasure and she's the kind of person that you really, you can only hope to work with. I know that the job that I do, it affects everyone on campus from students to staff. And so I know that what we're doing here is important and it makes a difference in the students' experience here on campus. Our university homepage contains a lot of valuable information, but I must confess that the first thing I look at is the countdown to the start of the fall semester on the top right of the page. Though more remains to be done, I am proud of all the work taking place in every division as we prepare to switch from quarters to semesters in August. I want to thank everyone who helped make the recent pizza with the presidents at the Bronco Student Center a success. This event provided another opportunity for students in all of our colleges to ask questions, get information, and further refine their academic roadmap. Students who are close to graduating should consider wrapping up their studies during the summer session. General registration runs through May 23rd, and classes will begin on June 18th. This will be an accelerated five-week summer session because of semester conversion. Be sure to fill out your My Planner and schedule an appointment with your advisor if you are thinking of completing your graduation requirements. I am also pleased to announce that we reached a major milestone in mid-April when the divisions of information technology and academic affairs collaborated to upgrade our PeopleSoft processes to operate in a semester environment. They achieved the change on time and without incident, a testament to collaboration and expertise. Many people were part of this success, and I want to close by acknowledging them.